All right. Me. All right, man. Uh, okay, let's start this episode of uh, C Stand. I'm Aaron Foster, comedian traveling all around the country and in a few other countries. Had finally had the chance to catch up with my man, Ian Badenhorst, over there in Shanghai, China. What's up? Yeah, buddy, man, it's a lot of cats that's going to be like, whoa, China? They doing comedy over there in English or in yeah. you know, whatever y'all consider English? Because we, you know, we we look at, you know, y'all, uh, some of that is slang from over the seas. Anyway. Tinglish. Yeah. Oh, well, I ain't <laughs> saying that. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get me no, dude, canceled. That, that's, <laughs> that's what everyone calls it here. That's oh, okay. literally, it's a common way of describing a hybrid English. It's, yeah. it's very international now. So Right, right, uh, right. And in like Shanghai and Beijing, you'll get three dialects all thrown in. Okay. You know, cool. it's like English, yeah. Shanghainese, Mandarin. <laughs> it sounds like you it saying, it sound like you're saying some, uh, some, some racial stuff. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm learning as we go, man. We were just talking off camera when we started about things that we can't talk about. And I, I'm feeling that, um, you know, that. But um, we don't have that problem here in America. You can say what you want to, but you deal with the consequences. And most of the time, the worst you can get is a punch in the mouth. You know what I mean? So, oh, and online, you can disappear. Oh, what you mean? They'll shut you down like they did Trump. <laughs> Well, they delete channels all the time. Yeah. The only difference uh, here is like the people who delete you, you can actually go go talk to them. Mm. In America, it's a mob of strangers. Yeah. Poss- possibly Russian butts. Uh, <laughs> but here, what? like if, if 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 your shit gets taken down, they're like, yeah, here's a button you can click and they'll tell you why. Oh wow. You know, and then uh, they were like, Yeah. Or or once I had a I had a guy uh, filmed his set. I sent it to him. And, uh, okay, I'm going to say a word, but it's an actual city, so don't get offended, right? It's called Nigeria. Chongqing. It's called what? Chongqing. Chongqing. <laughs> like, like Cheng Chong, but yeah. backwards. Flip it. Look, Some people all, don't want to say it, but it's a real city. Wait, <laughs> it's pause. called Chongqing. Pa- pause. I don't get offended by nothing. Only reason I'm talking about this shit is because I don't want you to end up getting your head cut off or get, you know, I didn't see <laughs> that you know, in, in, America. in America. We only see the bad shit. So when they start whipping people with canes like in Singapore or you to do something wrong. Singapore is nasty, bro. Yeah, exactly. So my friend's a folk singer. He has to submit his songs so he can sing in a coffee shop in Singapore. You know why America likes Singapore? Because you can uh, own 100 percent of the businesses there. The financial system's open to you. That's why you don't give a shit about the government. Oh, okay. As soon as, as soon as you can't play in the in the financial ball game, all of a sudden the country has a regime. Damn. Okay. <laughs> so Singapore's <laughs> Singapore's like uh, like Shanghai. It's kind of like they want to make Shanghai like a model city. Yeah. Uh, a lot like Singapore, but yeah, I mean, like the what they call like the culture bureau, they, they're pretty, you got to submit everything and they approve it. It's like getting, everything's like getting passed for late night TV. Oh, okay. maybe we're yeah. jumping ahead. That's true. Anyway, I said, I'm, I, I gave you a trigger warning for Chung Ching. Yeah. Because, because uh, it sounds like Ching Chong and you got tense when I said the word Chinglish. Oh yeah. Well, so, you know, um, you know, so like, the, you like know. the word Ching, with a K is like saying yeah. the word nigga to an Asian dude. Some people have problems with those words. Me, mm-hmm. I don't give them the energy that can get me in trouble. If you fight over a word, you get you can go to jail or murder somebody or hurt somebody. Yeah. But I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So I was a little cautious. But other than that, just let it fly, man. We all right. I mean, you know. Worst yeah, thing well, to do so, is take this shit down. That's it. We, we were just saying the word Chinglish, which is a mixture of Chinese and English, yeah. which is very common. It's like uh, like code switching. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a lot of words that you can't, you know, you can't, uh, they aren't 
and literal translations for us, it's easier to just use the English yeah. in the Mandarin sentence. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like th- there's 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 literal translations. But yeah, it's it's um it's fine. I was we were talking about what gets deleted. So I uh they have like scanners, just like YouTube does. You know what I mean? Okay. So like if you upload a video, my buddy uploads a lot of uh like uh, social media stuff. He does, he's an American. He does Chinese. Yeah. Shout out to Evan Danger. Okay. He, uh, he uploaded a, like a sketch where he's like Lord Voldemort cause he's bald and, uh, he's like working a job in China. Yeah. And then he's like walking around and, uh, there's Arabic music playing in the background okay. of his video. And the video got taken down for a second and you click on the button and it says uh, there is content in this video that's not allowed. It looks very ominous. And then you text them and they say, hey, at minute 113, there's a language that the, the software doesn't understand. Mm, so you wow. got to throw some you got to throw some subtitles on there. OK. Wow. So that they people can understand to, they what it's force saying. you to declare what that word is. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, but there's also, it's, it's a ton of other stuff. It's not just like censorship. It's like this thing has to comply for the visually impaired, the deaf. It's very left. I mean, literally, the whole country is just a super left wing empire. So okay. it's like you can't discriminate on anyone. You can't be racial. You can't stereotype. Like, like the rules are imagine work culture but with a leader you can't vote out of power okay <laughs> all right yeah that's yeah, cool and it's like, so- yeah it's like yeah the the i think it's article 26 of performance law like it's it's like the wokest document you've ever read like you yeah. can't you can't use disabilities to make money so you're like the comedian josh wolf yeah. He's got like palsy, whatever. Yeah. Like that's like his his like thing. Stick. Yeah. I suppose I let Stick. it fly, but that law is in place to stop people from being uh used. So like, oh, I'm gonna get a cripple guy and make money off him. Okay. And then they're like, so <laughs> but that law exists. Like you can't solicit money with a disability. Damn, man, it'll be wow. We have a lot of homeless dudes out there that are veterans. A lot of them uh, survive off of begging for money. So you saying even like the the beggars will get in trouble out there? No, no, no. On a commercial a, a commercial performance. Oh, okay. You, can't, so, you know what so, I mean? So, yeah. so there's no it's commercials. It's just hyper regulated. There's no commercials with people in wheelchairs and shit like that. In well, you can you can have commercials that sell wheel- wheelchairs. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're like, hey, right. yo, you need a wheelchair? He has a dude in a wheelchair and he looks happy. Okay, but, but but like but like a product that has a guy in a wheelchair sitting there and they're talking about the product and it has nothing to do with the wheelchair, that there's a law that brings a red flag to that. No, nah, it's more like if I'm if I'm because uh, in theory, if, I, the if I'm saying that dude. Yeah, but anyway, it's it's not like hard and fast, but it's like oh, okay. if, if there's a complaint. Okay. And generally, generally things only really get investigated if there's a complaint. All right. You know, like you get all your stuff approved and then you do your show. And even if it's all approved. Yeah. You get on the show and then someone gets upset. Instead of tweeting about it, there's a number you can call. <laughs> and then they send a guy and the guy's like, He's just a regular dude. It's his job. You yeah. know, and he goes over there and he's like, what happened? And uh, most of us film our shows. They're like, send us a tape and they yeah. read, they look at it and they're like, it's just nothing. So if you, but, uh, so, okay, well, let's get into the comedy part of this, man. I get it. There's certain <laughs> shit we can't talk about. Let's go past that. So that, you know, for the. There's uh, a lot we can talk about. I feel like you getting more offended right now. No, I'm not I'm offended you, at like, all. I'm, I'm not telling offended. you, so, so I was in Chongqing. Yeah. The city's name. 
Right. And uh, and uh, so like this guy gets up and he's like, hey, I got some Chinese on my set, but I don't speak Chinese. So I use Google Translate instead of Baidu Translate. OK. Baidu is like the Google of China, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he goes, Google's way better than Baidu. Baidu sucks. And that got blocked by the butts, not yeah. by a person. But it was okay. like, it was so weird that the, that the robot like kind of knew it was being talked about. It was like, oh, oh really? This guy's so talking the, smack. Right, right, right. So, so what the robot make him say? I, no, so, so I shared the video with all the comics and then yeah. it just said, there's illegal content on this file. Damn, that's crazy. But, yeah. but, the tra- <laughs> but it's a translation thing. It's yeah, not illegal, yeah. like you gotta go to jail. It's yeah, like, yeah, no, I get it. Th- there's, get it. yeah, and then I, and then I just scanned through. I basically had to watch all these openers sets again to figure out what might have triggered the thing. Right. But yeah, it's it's kind of funny. It's like they don't like Google here. Okay, I get <laughs> it. Google makes money, bro. They they take cash. Yeah. They got the whole market. All that yeah. money goes offshore. Right. Right. And uh, also, it's illegal to take people's personal data outside of the borders of China. Oh, okay. so those so those tech companies need to have an office here, yeah, and servers here because you can't you can't take people's personal info out out of the country, which makes sense. But that's not how they say it when you hear about it in America. Yeah, yeah. No, our our uh, <laughs> the, the the media that comes to America about. China and uh, is totally different than anything you and I have ever uh, discussed and shit. So <laughs> oh, I got crazy. a VPN. I watch yeah. American media. It's crazy. Like yeah. the, the COVID really sh- like opened my eyes to how weird it was because I'm sitting here living real life and I'm yeah. looking at the news and it's saying the opposite is happening. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, like, oh, I know that's bullshit because I'm outside every day. Right. I had friends and I had friends in Wuhan. I've got friends. I, I we got rooms across the whole country. We know people everywhere. Yeah, like yeah. we would we would know if people were just disappearing, man. Like it's right. it's, it's mostly bullshit. Man, that that's so fascinating, man. Um, because you know, in in America, they made it seem like as soon as uh, well, first of all, they made it seem like Wuhan, China, just fucking tossed that shit out at us. You know what I mean? They were like, they're trying to kill you. You know, that type of shit. And Man. then they made it seem like nobody in China got to come outside. And if you came outside in the whole country, they would just fucking beat you with sticks and then chase you back in the house All and right. kill you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what that is. Yeah. And you know, you can chop and change this later, but like, so the way the country's run is is like central government, yeah. and then every region has its own leaders. Right. And then each region has like elders and those people like they get public opinion from people on the ground. And that kind of goes up the chain and it also comes down the chain. It comes down the chain much faster. And, and, And all the, yeah, it's really efficient. So like if they have a policy, they can implement it real quick, which is why they control it well. But what happened in Wuhan is like those uh, regional leaders, like they they want to get promoted and they like terrified of the central. The central doesn't make those decisions. Like some local guy makes that call. Yeah. So it's you know what I mean. People blame the capital, but it's not the capital. It's coming from like oh this guy on this block, he's decided he wants to get promoted, so he's going to stop the spread. Mm. So those little cities that don't have resources, yeah. their leaders like went nuts. But like big cities like Shanghai, everyone's chill. There's like infrastructure, like everything's like sweet. That's so, cool, so like the real misunderstanding is it's like it's the way the system's set up that creates problems. It's not each chain in the system. It's like yeah. if I'm a if I'm in a small village. I'm not going down, so I'm going to make sure everyone's protected. And they think collectively. They don't think about individual. Okay. Which is like in the States, it's like every man for himself. But here it's like, yo, 
there's a million of us and you're being a dick. Sorry. Like, yeah. Okay. So you get, you get like, so like our lockdowns now, cause we getting COVID bad now, but it's not bad. It's Omicron. It's like super light, but each building, if there's a case in the building, your building gets locked down for 48 hours. No one else gets bugged by that. Okay. And then they That's- test you twice. And then if you're good, then the building opens. But so what happens? Okay. Since we're talking about COVID again, um, <laughs> <laughs> it just won't go away. Um, this one seemed, of course, everybody's trying to say that Omicron is just get you sick and you'll recover. You won't be killed like the Delta one did. So are they trying to imply that in 48 hours you're gone or is it that in 48 hours if you get detected, then you'll be fine? No, 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 no. No one's got it. Yesterday we had four people had it. Oh, wow. And uh, but but they don't count. (laughs) This is a joke. Like in China, they don't count asymptomatic cases. Okay. so if you test positive. Hold on one second. I'm cooking a roast and my time. Right, go is ahead. It. <laughs> Hold on. Sweet. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. Yeah, sorry about that, man. Um, yeah. multitasking so- here. So we got like a crazy um, contact tracing apps, but everyone uses digital everything anyway. They have for ages. Um, So we get we get tested. Well, you have to get tested if you want to do certain stuff. It's like the same as the states. Like you go to if you want to go to a a mass event with more than two hundred people, you got to have a test in forty eight hours of travel. Okay. But now that the spike the spikes are coming up. Yeah. Um, they do grid testing. So each city block will just send for free, like, like 10 people. You go downstairs, you get tested. If, <laughs> if you're, if you're like a, a close contact or someone in your building has a case, the, the whole building gets a 48 hour, like it's not a lockdown. It's like a quick, quick two day, two, 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 two tests. And then you're good. And if you have an actual case, then you're, Block gets locked down for two weeks, but okay. they usually let you out after seven days. Awesome. awesome. And then, and then my friend's <clears throat> husband, he got it. He's like the only foreigner in, in Shanghai right now who has it. Yeah. And uh, she's in a hot hotel now. Like they just they put you in a quarantine hotel. Is, it's yeah. like a like yeah. a little Holiday Inn type thing, like. Like okay. you can, they give you like the whole day to pack, and then you just take your PlayStation, your computer. It looks nice. She sent us videos. That's and, really uh, cool. You, Is she a comedian? Yeah, Dawn Wong. You can check her out. She's got her last video she posted from my room. has got like three million views. Um, wow. She has yeah, because she she got married to this Irish dude yeah. and. Uh, like she did a wedding speech and it's like Chinese wife roasts Irish husband. And that went crazy viral in China. And also like the Irish times posted it. Yeah. And then, uh, so it's got like 20 million views on Facebook. And then they posted that video again and everyone went to a YouTube channel and then she had just posted like a 10 minute set. Okay. And that, that got like, it must be on three million views right now. That's cool. Um, so let's 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 transition into some comedy talk, man. Because I yeah, I well, we got all that out of the way. So yeah, we man. Can, uh, we done done thirty minutes up front on you know um the the situation. Um, we should have done that off before. Yeah, no, no, it's all <laughs> it starts good. now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we can you know take two like that and uh, go on forward, man. So. Listen, man, I've been a, a kind of an admirer since I got uh, up on what you were doing over there in China, because uh, in America, especially in Chicago, Chicago is where I am. We have a, an incredible scene, man. We have some really, yeah. really, really funny comics. 
The venues are starting to blossom even more in it, but we have a problem. The problem is, is Chicago is such a tight knit fishbowl that you have oh, yeah. people that have been doing comedy for 20 and 30 years that have never really been out of Chicago. They even have, they have day jobs, they're funny as life, but because of the, you know, because of the environment, and industry does not uh, pay the way it should in Chicago specifically, they have no ability uh, to get out. You know what I mean? Is that because does, does improv kind of eclipse stand up in Chicago? Well, improv, the entity is different from M the improv, the um, stand up facility. So that's the first. No, but, thing. I, but I mean, like the whole reputation of Chicago is improv. Does that kind of hang over stand up so stand up doesn't get the fair shake that it needs? Like well, let me let me explain it to you. Improv, the institution of being multiple people being on stage acting out is only yeah. surviving by the marketing level of something like Second City. There's such a yeah. they have such a dynamic marketing department that they make the world think that Chicago pays attention to improv when in reality it we don't. They have maybe one really? yeah, we have maybe one to five venues that do improv and the majority of those struggle because people only really come to Second City to see improv and they don't even do it on the level that the mindset is about Wait, Chicago's improv. So that so that's my point. Like like the world knows Chicago for improv. Right. Shauna Helper in speech to Shanghai. She do improv workshops in Shanghai. Yeah. And uh, like all my favorite comics just about our Chicago comics. Hannibal. Okay. Uh, Mulaney, Kinane. Like, they're okay. all Chicago comics. Who, who's Mulaney? Oh, who, who's John who? Mulaney. John Mulaney. Oh, John Kyle Mulaney. Kinane. Okay, Kyle Kinane. I know, yeah. I know all them dudes. They all friends of mine. Yeah. I gave so Hannibal. Like, I like to uh, ring the bell. I gave Hannibal his first road gig. I gave him his first Already? Road gig. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, we have yeah, some so that you... You've never heard of that a fucking man. Incredible comics. You know what I'm saying? I can and imagine. We'll, yeah, well, I'll exchange some, uh, some some names with you after I hear what your point is. You were saying. Oh, that sounds just I'm saying is like it still feels like you got to get out of Chicago to make it like go to New York. But it's like, why can't Chicago just be a, a center? Yeah, we're trying to, it's trying to get built like that. We're starting to have a few places that build television shows in, uh, that tape in Chicago, because that's the yeah. source of popularity, mostly. Kyle Kinane is popular not because he's a great, uh, not just because he's a great comedian and, and it's funny, but he yeah. went to L.A. and got on, got involved with uh, uh, Comedy Central and started to get um, you know, the marketing behind him. Yeah. That's all it is. There are, you know, like I said, there are dudes, man, um, that I, you know, I'm going to give you some lists. Not all of them I'm going to be mentioning their names on on tapes because they they're going to work for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, myself, check me out. Uh, although I don't put all, most of my good shit online because I still want people to come see me. I'm an old school minded comedian which I'm changing now because like you were just saying, the young lady went viral. She got 35 million people following her. Now she can fill up theaters and all of that. 3.5 million. Oh, okay. 3.5, yeah. that's still a lot. Not just that, just that video. But, right. but you see, the thing is, it's like Earthquake Special just dropped. Yeah. You got 20 years. Yeah. You've ready, like, you don't, you don't need to be afraid of dropping all your material. Oh, no, 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 no. That ain't That's good. what I mean. Like, totally my good. friend, she dropped her 10-minute set. She's done comedy a year and a half. Mm -hmm. at, and now she's like, well, everyone's seen my set. Right. You know what I mean? But yeah. she's like... We've had that a, a few times. Actually, 
you know, us just us exchanging as comic to comic, that happened to uh Hannibal. That yeah. happened uh in in that when he first blew up, he, uh in my opinion only, and I love him as a brother that we're a little distant right now, yeah. but he probably had 15, he had 15 minutes. And I got him a gig at this place called Joker's Comedy Club. And I'm not shitting on him. I'm just telling you, we've gone through that. And he was yeah. super popular as a feature, but he struggled for those 30 minutes. But now he now he killing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, we, that dude, Dat Fan. You ever heard of Dat Fan? Oh, yeah, I know him. Dat yeah. Fan got popular off Last Comic Standing in the first two seasons. And he only had about 15 minutes. So when they would tour, yeah. he would eat it, man. He would eat it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a common thing. And that's what the results are. But it's some, but the comedy game, man, whether you're in China or you in fucking Florida, Chicago, comedy is a brutal, beautiful bitch. You know? And it's 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 fun here. Like yeah. uh the stand-up scene in Shanghai in China is massive. It's like, it's uh, you know how like if, if you go open for a band, yeah, like a comedian, a comedian opening for a band is like, I do production a lot. It's like there's nothing easier than just having a guy with a mic. Your roadies can set up behind you. Yeah, this guy just goes out and it's like one channel on a mixing board, and you can he does thirty minutes, and by the time he's done, the band set up. Right. Like it's a very inexpensive show. Yeah, but are they paying just are they paying well for that out there? Well, See, we have so people here's the that thing. Do that in Chicago. I mean, in, so yeah. well, I well, so the English thing is is still in a in a in a new phase, but Chinese stand up oh. is blowing up all over the country. It's massive, like yeah. monstrous. And uh, there's multi, multi million dollar companies. There's one called Shell Gore, which is like, dude, like you got to sign, like, a, I think it's a 10 year contract if they sign you. Damn. And they've got thousands of writers. And they have this uh, TV show called Rock and Roast. Okay. And it's like, it's, it's kind of a roast show. And they have uh, uh, like celebrity judges. It's, like, it's the last comic standing of China. Okay. Eng so you got to imagine in China, they used to have this thing called uh, Shang, Shang Shang. It's cross talk. It's two guys on stage, kind of like old school vaudeville. Yeah. You know, like that. Yeah, yeah. That's like the traditional comedy here. And uh, this year at the, the Chinese New Year Spring Festival Gala, it's like a national TV event. They had stand up comedy for the first time. So it's actually now become a cultural, like on that god. I mean, that god is insane. It's like it's kind of like the Super Bowl plus the White House Correspondents Dinner mixed with the Grammys. It's like the biggest TV event you're gonna get, and they put stand up on there the first year. But the Chinese comedy is is it's like no one's been given a, a microphone in China and said good talk. Yeah, it's the kids are controlled. losing their shit. No, but it's it's not that controlled. So you can imagine there's an entire country of people who get to take a microphone, stand on a stage and say their shit and be an individual. I mean, you can't say whatever you want, but you can stand on stage and be like, yo, I grew up. My dad is gone. My mom's an alcoholic. You know what I mean? Like you can talk. Like you can express yourself. And people are relating to that. And it's like, it's blowing up. And, uh, but it's totally different to the, uh, the format that we, that we used to yeah. going to open mic in a bar. Yeah. Everyone's hammered and there's hecklers. Right. Open mics here have 120 people at them. Damn. That's crazy. And people, people pay like $5 worth like to go in and sit there and watch open mics hmm. and it's 120 people. You've done comedy twice and you're in front of a hundred people. They're all sober. And then they just very good. Like, you know what I mean? And there's maybe 
20 killers in the whole country. I mean, like murderers. And then everyone else is bad. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say everyone's bad. I mean, there's a lot of good comics, but it's a yeah. young industry. Right, right. So right. if you start in Mandarin, you're on a stage in front of 100 people, like, within two months. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's awesome. That's an awesome um, concept. But are people really... Um, doing stand-up if they have to submit their sets and they have to stick to a set that's already written and you know because stand-up uh, is mostly uh in order well in america in order to achieve maximum laughter you first got to be able to relate to the people in the audience and the room and feel the energy in the room and then um, whatever you're doing, you might have a set, but you still got to be able to yeah. do that, right? And then For sure. if they're just doing like this, then that's just a one-man book reading no, no, no. play. <laughs> you're, you're picturing like a North Korean, <laughs> like everyone claps. <laughs> no, like uh, I'm saying they they show up to like a theater space. Right. And they'll sit and watch a show like they're not drunk. It's hard yeah. work, like getting it because they're like sober and they're just there to laugh. Okay. But uh, so when you do like a big commercial show, you got to submit everything. If you sell tickets, you got to submit stuff. Okay. But most people go off script and they do whatever. Do you, you know what I mean? Sure. Like whatever yeah. they talk, they talk sex, they talk relationship. They, you know, they talk. Shit, we yeah. had a dude at uh, this little spot I did. This dude talked about dog fucking. And I was no, that's like, not going to happen. Yeah, that's what I'm but, saying. But, but, but hang on, though. The thing is here is like, look, when you go to open mic and it's small, you just say what, you know, you just you just do your thing. Yeah. People go like too close to the line. The showrunner is going to shut that shit down. Like, OK, because the showrunner is the guy that gets in trouble. Yeah. Hey, pa pause like, one second. Pause All one right. second. Sorry. Okay, I'm back, man. Sorry, I'll cut that out. Uh, the showrunner is going to get in trouble if you guys go yeah. too far in the in the subject matter well and, okay, will, the, so it's like, will the audience turn off on you because really yeah, yeah. so but wait, wait so i'll explain so so like so what happens is you you get your submission and you tell the showrunner yeah i'm gonna do this this is what i'm gonna do tonight yeah uh the showrunner is like like everything here it's like they regulate the businesses and not the people so right. like if i'm making money as a, a like if I own a production company, you got to get a license to operate as a production company. There's an exam you got to write. You got to have three people on stuff that. Okay. And it's like, dude, in China, you open a lemonade stand. 10,000 people might show up for your lemonade. You know, like there's that many people. So they're like, listen, if you're going to operate a business, you need to have all the safety protocols in place. Okay. Because your shit might just pop up. You know what I mean? You don't know how big you're going to be. Yeah. So like if you have a, there's different grades. So if you're like less than a hundred people, they don't really care. hundred to 500. You got to call the fire department and let them know. You got to let, you know what I mean? This like how many, sorry. You mean if this, yeah. how many people show up? Yeah. It's all yeah. you, you're, you're planning for oh, okay. say 500 people. So so it's when you if you open a performance company, you need a fire license for the venue. Every and show. Yeah. So basically, you got to prove the venue safe. Like like safe to house the people yeah. and you need a script of the performance. Like what is the performance? And then that's it. So you can pretty much operate. A performance company anywhere as long as you have those two criteria right and the government is, the, may I, the, may I ask you know, a question I, mm -hmm. may i ask you a question sure generally what does that cost what generally. you mean like 
what like, getting the approval? well first you got to buy a license you got to buy a license and take a test no 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 the test the test is you get it once so if i open a company to do performance uh which we'll do in september now uh i gotta have three of these guys that pass this test to operate a performance company those guys know the law like but it's like a uh an agent you gotta yeah. know con performance contract law you gotta know the legal rights of performers right. you gotta know how to check uh rigging like if you're operating stage equipment yeah. all this stuff okay it's just it's just regulation that's all it is picture right. any left-wing administration that's regulated okay safety so most of the thing is is and they they regulate the business the comedian goes on the show if he fucks up and there's a complaint the company gets fined ah okay you know what i mean wow. so it's so like if you go off script on a on a major production if you go off script then you can actually basically put your career on the back burner for example back in if you fuck up yeah, yeah. if you I'm fuck up i mean day. but that's the thing if people don't complain there's okay. you're cool so but then that's one side of it the other side is chinese people are like pretty conservative right and and uh they have like a uh they don't like shame they don't like jokes about shame they're not really into jokes about sex or taboo stuff right and then politics is just off the table in general yeah so even if you shit on america like it's funny but they're like we don't it's like polite society we don't talk about religion and politics you know okay so so even if you try a joke like that, they just pull back on you and you're like, mm, what's the point? Right. Like, right. you're like, you have to be so funny to make a joke like that land. Okay. Um, so, and if you're egregious with it, like if you just keep hammering away at like gross jokes and the showrunner doesn't pull you off stage, someone in the audience is going to be like, this was disgusting. I bought my kids. Because everything's got to kind of be PG 13, although. They mostly be like, yo, don't bring kids. Okay, 18, I was about to say, like, man, that, that actually takes us into another basic conversation here. So <clears throat> if the shows are all PG and appropriate, non-offensive shows, and kids are there, then it's not done at night. Or, or is it done at night? Or is it done at dusk? Because in Chicago, uh, in, in, our, in my life of experience, the shows I had the most fun with are at night shows. You know what I mean? I, the late, the late show. We're, yeah, the late we're still, shows. And, we're still talking about a Chinese stand up, like Mandarin language stand up. Yeah. So it's a new industry. So I think in Shanghai, there must be uh, maybe five, four or five brick and mortar comedy clubs. Okay. But there's about a hundred you know you know like rooms comedy companies that oh. put in rooms everywhere and then okay. probably more uh open mic rooms mm. uh so what these these other rooms most of the rooms do is they go into like a jazz club or a rock club right usually like a jazz type club and they uh they're like yo let us get in your bar at midday two o'clock and five o'clock we do three shows and we're out of there by seven o'clock and then you start your jazz club okay so now these jazz clubs are like that's awesome like we right. we got no business during the day and then like saturday sundays i got like a friend who does 30 shows a week Dang. she's doing like yeah. And the bars are paying what that you getting a clip of the, of the bar or something? No one's the drinking. Alcohol? They just they just buy a ticket. No, oh, and they do, they doing the door deal. They doing the door deal and they got enough much. they got enough business to do three shows per day. Dude, it's unlimited. Like this just the people never stop. 
You go to a convenience store in Shanghai at three o'clock in the morning, there's a line. You got, it's that many it's people. Like, that drives you nuts. It's like, in South Africa, I go home, I'm terrified because there's no people. Like any person <laughs> I see outside is a murderer to me. Oh. In Shanghai, it's like, how am I going to murder these people when there's always a crowd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. That's cool, man. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but like yeah, I live downtown. Like if I go to the convenience store now and yeah. it's 3.30 a.m., there might be two or three people in there. Right, right. Damn, yeah. it's 3.30 there a.m., man. Thank you for staying up so late. I, That's I'm all right. Sorry, bro. I, I work I mean, we were, you know, my whole life. This timing between China and America was messing me and you up for a little while because I would be like, damn, I wonder what time it is here. And I see you online right. and you'd be like, it's morning. And I'm like, damn, it's Dude, nighttime here. You know what I mean? It's Friday right now for me. Right. And it's not Friday here yet. So weekend tomorrow, son. <laughs> Let's do it. Exactly. <laughs> That's all good, man. So yeah, I'm uh I'm very intrigued about this, man. Um about uh, what you guys do on stage, right? I got a chance to uh, check out your stuff online. Um, and oh, that's, was, that's some old school, old school, like, I must be from, from like three years ago when I started out. Yeah, it's no issue, uh, man. I'm not judging uh, you. I'm just looking no, no, at no, some I'm of just the saying, topics, you know. The so, topics. so back, back then, yeah, comedy, comedy was, uh, English comedy, us like as expats were pretty unregulated. Okay. And back then, uh, stand up comedy in Chinese wasn't a thing. So uh, at all. So there were you you talking about uh, at all. There were no but, Chinese uh, comics besides like the old TV shit, you know. No, like uh there's a English okay, first off, there were expat comedy clubs that would come through a guy called John Moorhead punchline comedy. Okay. They do the expat tour. So yeah. like this guy's done Bill Burr in Hong Kong. The last time Bill Burr came out. Oh, wow. Okay. Jim, Jim Jeffries. Yeah. Uh, like big, big names. He toured them before. What's this? And then name? Uh, it's called punch. I don't know if it's called punchline comedy club uh, or the punchline punch. Is it affiliated wow. with the American Punchline, the club? No, punchline? no, no. Okay. Um, he does the expat scenes. So Hong Kong, Asia, Dubai. Uh, now it'd be it's interesting, man. Um, so, this, so dude, let me, this dude's so, got some major names there. Those dudes aren't going to be open to changing their sets or being censored. So how did they get? Okay, so so this this was from like say nineteen ninety seven, yeah. And then that's where I got into comedy. Like they would do comedy in the bar that I worked for. So I was the okay. entertainment manager there, and okay. these guys would come every three months. Yeah. And then I was just like his favorite stuff because I would produce the show as well for him. So yeah. he he just bring the comics, and I'd have everything up. Cause I always wanted to be close to comedy, you know? Right. right. And then, uh, Fell in so love we've had <laughs> mostly, well, I wanted to do comedy 2003 and yeah. I, I just chickened out. And then, uh, so, I, so I was just, and I have a lot of comedian friends in South Africa and all that. So I, uh, I would put on the shows and stuff and then, uh, Mostly British guys would come out. It's like the British comedy circuit because they would do Hong Kong and that's very British centric. Okay. And uh, and um, anyway, so from 95 to like 2012, then uh, they started doing a, a, a club called Kung Fu Comedy Club opened up. And Kung Fu Comedy Club was partners with another group and they had a huge split. So then there was Kung Fu Comedy Club and Shanghai Comedy Club and uh, a lot of politics in there. The guy that opened Kung Fu Comedy Club, there were two of them. One is Turner Sparks, who's, who's New York based. Uh -huh. He's in LA right now doing the Life Factory in Vegas. 
not in LA in Vegas. And then another guy called Andy Curtin. So Andy is the, the head of Australia live nation. Big, like, like big deal. Okay. So, so those guys started a full-time comedy club and then there was Shanghai comedy club. Another guy called Barney Rivera and Paulie can, uh, there was a big political riff. And when punchline left, I went to Shanghai comedy club for whatever reasons. And, uh, and then both those clubs left and then I was left like holding the ball for English comedy. Okay, but that's cool. But What's back, wrong with that? Shit, that sounds like a uh, nothing, cool. nothing. But back in the day when Kung Fu Comedy started, they had a couple of people who started trying it out in Mandarin, yeah. and they started recruiting locals. And they were like, uh, "Let's do a, sh- a, a Chinese show." And they started building this this uh, sh- Chinese stand up comedy scene in a Western style. Okay, you know what I mean. So they started Chinese stand up. And then a guy called Storm Shu, this guy's like, this guy's cool. He's like Shanghainese. He started his own thing called Comedy UN. Mm. And, and when English comedy got shut down, uh, he went full balls to the wall, like, I'm going to do Chinese comedy. And he started building his, his brand, which is really cool. He's got like live podcasts. He's got like four hour specials. And uh, he's like legit. Okay. He's like a big Patrice O'Neill fan. Okay, well, Patrice <laughs> like, O'Neill, like, man. I got yeah, he's yeah, a good dude. Yeah. So Storm's Storm's like vibe is very New York, mm. and um, very Patrice. And um, he's still. I mean, we all got to toe the line, like what you can do on stage. Yeah. But he didn't go the route of that big comedy company. He's like, no, nah, I'm doing my own thing. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, he's respected as like the legit guy. Yeah. yeah. So it's okay. like, oh, one's that fan and one's Ralphie May and Storm's yeah. in the Ralphie May camp. Okay. So you know y'all I mean? over there, y'all really look highly on Ralphie May. huh? That's cool. Um, dude, they're very hungry for comedy, uh, nerd out comedy content. Okay. It's, We'll get into it, but like Rolfi May's got like a really good online class. Uh, like a, he's got a lot, uh, a comedy store master, like a three hour session he did with the comics that went around. So everyone who's learning comedy is oh, like desperate okay. for, for uh, content. And, um, and then Dawn, my friend who went viral, she's got a channel where I was telling you, like translates lesser known comedians and put some oh, online. So she, she, to, uh, what, that's the strategy, bro. I'm telling you, yeah, I'm if we bring you out, her, man, that'd be dope. If we, if we bring you out, you get good. This is actually our plan. Well, like, you know, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. However, I want to be frank with you, man. I am, uh, I'm really, unruly on stage. You know what I mean? I, my shit's <laughs> fucking... I can't lie and say I haven't had people walk up and be like, damn, that's hilarious. You're a funny motherfucker. But the um, television appeal, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get my mind wrapped around letting the corporation control me. Because without that corporation, you're an underground comic or you're, you know... Uh, not gonna be you, super. You gotta have a clean twenty, though. Oh yeah, I got a clean twenty, but it's still talking about you know my neighborhood in Chicago where they shoot a lot. You know what I mean, stuff like that. And oh yeah, I don't that's know fine. What the content issue are out there. I'm I'll, down. I'll send you. Believe me, I'm I'll open and down for it. I just want to make sure that I don't get out there and then I'll be on the news because they didn't put my ass in jail. Saying some shit. You I- are not gonna go to jail. The Booker. <laughs> I just booker my life trying not to. They have jail out there. I don't want no uh Chinese anal rape in my life. Jail terrifies me. Dude. dude, you wouldn't feel a thing. Uh <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, you gotta get it out of your mind. What okay. happens is yeah. like the booker will get a fine. Okay. That's it. 
right. <laughs> that, it sounds that's like it. you could it sounds like you'll make so much money the fine won't be shit though. Did my buddy like he got fined like four times? How much? Because what happens is uh forty thousand RMB is like uh divide that by seven. Like five thousand US. Wow, that's a lot of money, man. Is he he making yeah. it like that? He's making money like that out there. I need to come my they, ass out to fucking they, This is a booker so for the whole show. And they have a celebrity that the show is about. But okay. so the, the point is, it's like, um, like, I, so we're, we're trying to start this English comedy scene. Right. It exists. And, and right now it's all over the country. We're starting a network in 20 cities. Right. Right now there's, there's three cities with more than 20 comics in it. And uh <laughs> damn <laughs> shit. English. And then yeah. and then of of those, Shanghai's got the most Chinese comics doing it in English. We got like yeah. 25. Beijing's got like 10, 12. So uh, so what I'm trying to do is a lot of people use English stand-up comedy to practice English. Yeah. So everybody's studying English and most of the most of the foreigners here are English teachers. Right. So people come to, to stand up to practice listening to English. Oh, that's right. cool. Interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. So, uh, now, now they don't have you guys don't have it where there's an interpreter standing next to the comic. Fuck that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. No. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> no, 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 dude. People have suggested it. Yeah. And uh so this is what I'm doing, right? First off, you can't learn how to do comedy by performing to audiences like that. They're called English corners. Okay. English corner is like you go out and then you just speak to native speakers. So my my thing, I called it comedy corner. Yeah. Branded that way so that we could attract, but I've never marketed my shows to locals. Okay. There's Chinese comedy clubs that are starting that. So a lot of our veterans, we've performed enough for locals that we can do sets that they like. You got to do characters and you got to do like jokes that are just straight line jokes. Okay. You know, like one, situational, one, situation one, comedy. One-liners, one-liners. Is that, would that be and, considered one line? No, they don't get puns. Oh. Um, like I go, I got a, like a joke about, and I, it's funny, I, I, I do an impression of Erica in it. Because, like, what Chinese people do is they'll, like, practice English on you. Yeah. They'll just say some random shit on the street. Right. And it's like they, they learn a word and they just want to see if it tracks. Yeah. So they'll say it to you. And you're like, it's like an improv class. And right. I'm like, yo, I, I'll go with it. Like, you, you, whatever you guys want to work with me, I'll do it. And I was in a store one night and uh, this guy walked in and he saw me and he's like, I'm going to practice some English. This is foreign to do. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and then as I turn around, he said, like, in a bonix, he was like, yo, what's going on, baby? You good girl? Like that. <laughs> right. He and saw I was that like, on TV fuck? somewhere. <laughs> and he called me girl, like, yeah. what's going on, baby? So, like, he said that. That's what happened in real life. But in yeah. my joke, I'm like, oh, if he wants to practice, I'll practice. And then I went all black woman on him. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. and, I, and I'm like, oh, you didn't call me that. And like, I hit yeah. him with my purse. Yeah. And we're like yeah. yelling world star. I'm like, he's got the experience. Okay. And then it, and then in the joke, I'm like, oh, and then I realized there was a black girl standing behind me and he was talking to her. Oh, so, okay. So it's like a whole, you all do this to me. I don't mind. One guy said this to me and then there's like a little act out and then there's like a payoff at the end. Yeah. That's yeah, a yeah. very straight, easy to follow joke with, okay. with performance in it. So yeah. jokes like that and they love callbacks. This is the, the English practice audience. Cause if you hit them with callbacks, they're following along and it makes them feel smart, you know? Okay. But like if you, cause they are smart. They're like, everybody has got a master's degree. It's insane. <laughs> um, so like, they just don't speak English. So a lot right. of people talk dumb to them, but they're not okay. dumb. So like those jokes work very well. Like the, the 
comics that are like animated. I'm sure uh, Erica might have told you about Simeon Goodson. Uh, uh, no, Simeon. you know what? We didn't get a we didn't get a chance to talk about any of the uh, many of the comedians that are overseas. We talked about this is one guy who came to Chicago in the last year or two. Asian cat, um, real sharp dude. He says he has a television show in China and all these other stuff things. Uh, Joe Wong. Who? Joe Wong. No, Probably. I don't think that's him. Anyway, but, um, but I'll give you examples. So Simeon yeah. Goodson, he's a New York comic, Brooklyn yeah. comic. He just got passed at the cellar. Okay. He was living out here. So when he went on stage, his like larger than life, like character, like the audience just lapped it up. Yeah. I mean, besides him being like hilariously funny, like the audience, you can just watch him and laugh. He's, is he he's a, just funny. Is he an Asian dude or, or no? Simeon Goodson? No, he's a African-American guy. Oh, His, so he, so op okay. he opened for Hannibal on the the comedy commissado tour. Okay. Um, What'd you say his name was? I'm gonna look him up while we talk. Simeon. 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 I'll text it to you. Let me look at his face. He's Simeon Patterson. Goodson. Goodson. Okay. I was about to say Patterson. He don't look black. Anyway, that guy, he might have been the, the funniest comic we've had come through Shanghai ever. Okay. But I mean, but I like, I mean, because he lived here, his wife was teaching, like, um, he, you know, he did my room like a bunch of times. Okay. And uh, yeah, just to work with that guy is just insane. Like him and Mateen Stewart, we <laughs> went and did a show in uh, yeah, I like Mateen. Hangzhou together and and he was hosting. Okay, Simeon's I, wild. Okay. I'm not familiar with him, man, but you know what? I spend a lot of my time on the road. I don't really do a lot of messing around with free comedy that much no more or open mics that much. Uh I do I work I work the road, bro. I do shows around the country that pay. This open mic shit is a uh, to me seems kind of weird to me. Um that once you get to a certain level, you start figuring the game out, right? Who's doing open mics? I like, I love watching open mics, but a lot of the time, it's so terrible, man. The first forty-five dudes are fuck; they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. And the, you get Shanghai's, a Shanghai is like fun because, like, there's no, there's way more audience than there is comics. Yeah. So you get a lot of stage time. But we're about to go commercial. Uh, literally, like, COVID, we were just basically, so I was saying, like, the foreign thing was unregulated and technically didn't exist. Right. And people were making, making money, but not legally. And that's actually why it got shut down. So there were a few, like, Jim Gaffigan came out and uh, uh, Eddie Izzard. <laughs> And Dylan Moran, like big, big UK names. We had Bill Bailey, Stanhope. Um, like Doug Stanhope came out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. And I'm I'm not yeah. close with Doug so Stanhope. That shit's, I know him, but that, that shit's dude over. cannot be regulated. Ooh. That's what I mean. So that shit is over now. So oh, now okay. So those those days are kind of over. And we had COVID and two years of nothing. So I just said, well, okay, we can't bring people in. We're going to just start rooms here and start developing comedy. Is and there uh, a way, you know, not to be bucking the system too much, but is there a way that y'all have like super private invite only unrestricted shows? Not for money. You can't charge for those shows. You can say what the fuck you want for free. <laughs> you just okay. can't make money from it. So how would they know that you're charging if you don't tell them? Dude, it's basically it's all digital currency. 
Oh, everything there is digital currency. Oh, and then, and then also, if you get if you get caught, you're fucked. <laughs> okay, I'm just you would be. I would be. But yeah. then, you see, this is this is like what we were kind of planning to do is like my idea was look you want to go on late night tv you get a good clean set you make it the whole country knows you you're a millionaire the next day yeah like rolfie may's got clean hours so that yeah. walmart can sell his cds right that's the model if you if you do possible stand-up comedy in china there's a billion people that will watch you you're made. Yeah. I mean, like, how hard is it? Is it, not, it all comes out of your all, brain. You know what I mean? I exactly. got, a, I got, a, I got an hour clean. I just, I love doing my, my crazy, my favorite yeah, joke wait. right now. Yeah, yeah. My favorite okay. joke that Every I'm doing in the building right now is about artificial insemination. Nice. And yeah, the industry. I get it. You know what I mean? But people, it is, it talks about what we're talking about. You know what I mean? So. I get that. And, and again, I might be just running my mouth because when the money is there, I do what the hell I'm supposed to do. Yeah. You got to be professional. I just. But be- that's that's what you do. Right. Yeah. So my so to bring it all back together, I'm building like a, an industry that's. It sounds so weird to say I'm building an industry. It's like, but we literally are the English comedy scene in China right now. Right, and that's uh, big, dude. The potential is fucking incredible. Yeah, right now it's <clears throat> fucking nothing. Um, but we got twenty cities lined up. I just, I literally just put them in a group last this month, mm-hmm. and the cities that are established are cool. Everyone that doesn't have a scene but want to bring us out, we're gonna start do comedy competitions. Do you think you're funny? Get people to come in and try out. Okay. Half the show, half the show will be a competition, and then the well, the first thirty minutes will be a competition, and we'll do an hour of touring comics, right? Right. And then, and then a workshop the next day, and and then get a, a local guy who likes it to start an open mic. Ah, cool. Maybe <laughs> we're gonna the winner, do every, the winner of the contest, right? Well, probably the organizer. Um will be the main comic because he'll be the funny he'll be their number one guy and then i will do online not zoom open mics but like feedback sessions what you got what you're working on tag it up like this we do that nationally so everybody can come in these rooms that's the the free scene yeah so to speak right that happens in bars and the Chinese comics can go there and practice doing comedy with foreigners. The legal comedy, we sell those shows to Chinese comedy clubs. They already exist. Yeah. But we say, look, your your customers, there's a hundred in that in that group that'll pay to watch a clean English show. I sell you an English show because you got to yeah. get a show licensed. All our stuff's licensed. We yeah. give them the scripts, right. and we just go out there and we do our set. Right. You know, when you go to record a special, you're 90% going to do all your best stuff the way you perfected it. Yeah. You're not going to be riffing when you record the special. No. That's the mindset. So I've got my best hour. I go out and I just deliver it. So that's where we make our money. Inside, we build the comics. At the free shows, you say what you want. Right. Every scene has the English listener audience. And then there's the local expats, but those are getting less and less. Mm. Like they, 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 they basically, there's a huge industry here of, of illegal English lessons, extracurricular t- tutorials, because they, they're trying to give all these kids extra education. So it's illegal now to charge money for compulsory education after school. Because they, the kids are getting worked too hard. So the government's like, that's you're done. Like when school's over, the kids got to go do some other shit. They can't be going to class. And because of that, there's way less foreigners in the country. There's less work. Okay. Only like legit comics, you know? <clears throat> right. So 
we're going to take English comedy and be like, yo, you want to send your kids somewhere to practice listening and it's entertainment. We're going to fill that gap. Gotcha. But that's not the comedy you want to do. Well, it's not that I won't do it. It's that no, 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 right no, 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 no. now. I'm saying. So, so hang on. So that's they, not the, oh, you mean, they, you mean that's not the finish. comedy that generally people want to do. Generally. No, that's not, but that's not what we would bring you out for. So all the open micers can go practice on that learning market. Yeah. And all the legit comics will graduate to expat audiences or foreigners that locals that studied abroad. So well, my so rooms are all like, like high it level. It sounds like the system out there would pay the most for those for the room that you just mentioned, where you know it's a hundred percent clean and it's a hundred percent appropriate, and it's just primarily for them to listen. So Mateen, oh, wait, 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 wait. so let me let me finish. Perfect for that. Let me say it. so they all have to be hundred percent clean, but. Yeah. The room I'm focusing on is for high level, almost native level speakers. So the guy that went to Yale or MIT for four years and then came back to China, that guy speaks like everyone, like, like a foreigner. Right. We do our tours. We do the clean hour. Yeah. We do all that shit, right? Yeah. We hit right. up the cities. All my VIPs have it extra ticket to come watch a private show. Okay. For free. That's kind of my, yeah. Okay. Interesting. You go to, we got a thing in China called KTV. It's like a karaoke bar. You rent it out. It's just your friends. You got mics and you sing songs all night. <laughs> rent a private room. It's only friends, invitation only. I know who my VIPs are. Yo, you want to come see Let's basically come hang out with 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 uh, Aaron, and then you do your set. Bam. Yeah, and you, you know can, what I mean. Uh, so, yeah, no, I get it. I totally get it. That's a smart. That's a smart business model, there, man. It looks like. But I'm not paying you for that show. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like you get your stage fee, you get yeah. your bookings. Yeah, you know. But but that's you know that's the. It, it sounds like Cass will be making enough money on all the on the tour itself to not be worried about doing that room, but that room will be the one that probably gets the most uh, uh, people wanting to be in it because it sounds like it's more of an elite situation, right? That's, so. it's like, that's, that's you having fun, man. That's like, yeah. because um, yeah, it's like if you go do shows, I'm, we still haven't figured out how big the market would be. Right. In terms of bringing internationals, like yeah. for us right now, we can go do the, like the, we call them the ESL rooms, the English second language rooms. Yeah. That's for comics like me done it for six years. I've right. got an hour clean. Yeah. It's not, it's not near the level it should be, but for them, it's kind of written for Chinese people. I have a yeah. Chinese wife, so it's relatable. Yeah. And, um, now, do you speak? Yeah. Do you speak fluent Mandarin or any uh, uh, what languages? Dude, do I live speak? in I live in Shanghai, bro. It's like we've been speaking English. All they do is teach people how to speak English. Okay, but, now, but, uh, but Shanghai, do you learn Chinese or Mandarin there, or do you learn another language that I I'm not familiar with there? Okay, the so the native the native people. No, no, no. There's Mandarin in the. People in the south of China speak Cantonese. Cantonese, yeah. Yeah, and then everyone else speaks Mandarin, but mo everyone speaks Mandarin. Um, now, but there is a language named Chinese. No, 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 no. no. Chinese, Chinese is... It's like a slang statement. It's like an umbrella term. Like, well, do you... Okay. Uh, but each, each city, each region has its own dialects. Right. So... My wife is Shanghainese and okay. she speaks Shanghainese. Okay. And my my Mandarin sucks because she won't teach me Mandarin. Oh, that's funny. Because she wants you to talk in English and she wants to talk in English. No, she wants to speak in Shanghainese. In front of you so she can call you all types of motherfuckers dude, and bad words. Dude, Shanghainese is like... <laughs> it's like... <laughs> 
It's like gangster New York. It's like, I guess it's like New York, you know, like they don't really like, like they are proud of Shanghai. It's like we're Shanghainese. And, and that comes because it's such a uh, migrant city that's got everybody coming to it to work. So she the doesn't people, want to, so she doesn't want you to learn her and the her. language that she ne- uh, no native. she only wants me to learn Shanghainese. She's like Shanghainese is the language, okay. and then all that other shit can piss off. You know, like okay. she doesn't care. Okay, cool. But but uh, yeah, so so there's like. Um, like Wygoran or like foreigners, and then there's YDs. YD is Chinese people not from Shanghai. YDs. Yeah. So it's like okay. yeah, these guys, these guys, like they're not Shanghainese. So okay. like you'll 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 hear them like cut to the front of the line and start speaking Shanghainese, and it's like yeah, this is our our hood. Wow. But then I've also okay. seen her like I'll be like yo like. Like hook us up and she'll go talk to someone and that person doesn't speak Mandarin and she's like, ah, I got nothing. <laughs> like she does you know, like, <laughs> So it's like, yeah, it's fun. That's cool. But each each region has their own um their own dialects and stuff. All but right. generally everyone speaks Mandarin. That's the main um Right. And so most and so um you guys are totally only focusing on English speaking shows. And uh, yeah. are you real close to some cats who speak Mandarin and do comedy and they're flourishing or is it such a foreign concept to the, to the culture of uh, man? Dude, there's millionaires. Dude, when, when Stan Up came to Shanghai, yeah, he didn't want an opener. Like he was just going to go up and do his, you know, like do the announcements and bring me up. Yeah. And then in the car over, he's like, yo, give me a local. He's like, give me a filthy, like, local. Like, and we had this girl, Cece, and we're like, she's perfect. Like, she's, yeah. she looks like anorexic and she just does anal sex jokes. And, and we we're like, that's the one. And we couldn't get hold of her. Holy shit. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, and there was this other guy who's like really funny. Like, and I thought his name was Frank, Frankie. His English name, his Chinese guy. So I'm like texting Storm, the the the, the guy from Comedy UN. I'm like, yo, yeah. send me Frankie's number. You can open for Stan Up if he shows up. Right. It's like a huge deal. And uh, I was wrong. His name wasn't Frankie. His English name was Jason. So I, I screwed up. Okay. But that guy who I'd noticed, like he had done a couple of open mics. He's a he did coding, and um, He's famous now, like super, super famous. Really? And he, yeah, he just did Chinese comedy and he went on that like last comic standing show. And then now he's like celebrity. Wow. My buddy was telling me he charges like 200 grand, 200,000 RMB to like make appearances or speak at an what? event. Yeah. This is the Chinese last comic standing. Yeah. Well, it's like the equivalent of it. Okay, man, that's dope, yeah. man. I, I, so, uh, whose couch do I have to sleep on to be in this fucking scene? God damn it, that's crazy as hell. He making money like that, that quick? No, no, but you sign with that company. It's oh, he like signed signing with the big company. The, uh, the yeah, it's the corporate. It's like, si- yeah, it's like signing with Netflix. But if Netflix had comedy clubs in every city in the country. And like they also have retail stores. It's crazy. Like you go buy, a sh- like you can go shopping in their retail store and buy merch. And they have like mazes. You can and you win points that get you tickets to shows. They have so clubs why, everywhere. So let me ask you a personal question. Why haven't you docked with them and and partnered with them or moved into that realm, man? I mean, two hundred thousand dollars. I don't think Hannibal. <laughs> I don't think Hannibal charging two hundred thousand dollars. Not two hundred thousand dollars. Renminbi, like Chinese currency. So how much is that in American money? I don't know, like. I guess the same. Like. Yeah, hundred thousand divide, divided by seven. Oh. So, uh, That's three, like thirty thousand. Okay, so yeah. that would yeah. So um, 
you know, is it what, you know, unless it's something you don't want to talk about, but man, well, I, if it's very few people involved, or are you like a purist? You're like, man, I'm not selling out, you know. So, so the English scene doesn't exist officially. Okay. Shanghai, Shanghai and Shenzhen. Yeah. So Shenzhen right now, well, it's all locked down right now. Shenzhen have a, a much more relaxed culture bureau system. Yeah. So stuff that gets allowed in Shenzhen is a lot more relaxed than what gets allowed in Shanghai. Okay. So in Shenzhen, if it's like less than a hundred people, they're like, just go ahead and do it. But in Shanghai, everything gets regulated. Okay. We're in a process of building a model that they're going to repeat in other cities. Okay. So right now we're doing everything by the book, not taking any chances because we want them to trust us. Right. And then start building it. Right. Um, there's no sign that it's going to get more relaxed, but it's like you go to the DMV, you got to fill out all these forms. They're like, wow, there's a form missing back of the line. If you do everything by the book, <clears throat> those officials, they're not like, Nazis, they're just dudes like that work in the post office. I need this form, this form, this, 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 this. Bam. Yeah. Stamp done. It's it's so uh, like everyone, you film your set on your phone and then you send the transcript. And mm. uh, because it's in English, they gotta translate it. And the translation is what's important, right? Right. These local cats just film it on their phone. I got everybody like holding a mic, like I framed it up nice. I put our names on it. I made it look super professional. Yeah. Trying to make sure that the, <clears throat> the system is like, yeah, we're going to, we like these guys. Right. So there's a festival in the end of the year that we're trying to get in as the first official English. Um, so once we get it started, like I, I put an hour down. I didn't care how, right. like there's like, there's like, uh, there's like only eight shitty minutes in there, but I made it an hour. Like I've got a product so yeah. I can say, listen, here's a, a show. Sell it to your, your crowd. Right. That big company, I'm pretty sure in like two or three years, will try and buy out whatever English there is or just start their own. But they'll probably go to a Beijing comedy club and ask them to start it. And then, uh, but there's room for everyone. So yeah, it's not, it, dude, it's not big money at all yet. But I've, once it's approved, oh, we got to see, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. up until last year of May, we were not, foreigners weren't allowed to open a, uh, a culture company, like a, like a performance company. Yeah. And it's funny. Cause it's like, yeah, they don't, if you look at what's going on in the culture war in America, like they don't want to import that. So because it's English comedy, they worried about like that cultural bleed over. Yeah. Like oh, that's this, interesting, this, man. What, like, um, what specifically like, are you calling culture that they don't want? Hip hop culture and stuff like that. Um, like TikTok shit, <laughs> you know, like like yeah, but that TikTok is supposed like, to be owned by, you know, oh, dude, companies in tic China. The TikTok that you'll you'll get is different to ours. Okay, you see, like an American TikTok, it's <clears throat> it's like. It's like a hundred different types of non-binary people telling you how to use their new pronouns. There's uh, <laughs> dancing videos, people eating soap, you know, like, I guess batshit crazy stuff. Right. And then, and then in Chinese TikTok, there's like, firstly, if you're a kid, it shuts off at night, you're done. Like you can do it till eight o'clock and then it uses your camera. So it's like, you can't, you you can't fake your way like you put your phone down and you do your homework and you can play on weekends and during the week at eight o'clock it shuts off awesome. so it's like it's not it's not like oh you can get online and then get 
you know, groomed by a pedophile and then watch some dude get murdered and then like regular internet. It's, it's crazy. So they don't need that, that sort of stuff. And then also there's all the propaganda and weird shit, you know, like you, you have censorship in America too. Like the platforms take stuff down. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So there's also like, narratives like even english teachers here like the the school principals will be checked like what are you teaching the kids like what angle are you teaching the kids you know are right. you talking about it neutrally are you being pro west are you being pro china um so they also have that that issue with um our our content you're not going to like let me stand on stage and roast china for an hour even if it's clean right you know right, what i mean sure. my well, thing was like, that look, even be I'm, funny you know what i mean why that would well, it can be i mean okay. we do roast china lightly you know i mean like i make fun of the shit my wife does you know okay. like hacky premise like oh the squat toilets are like wild you know like that's a common one but my thing is like I want to get Chinese comics to learn how to roast America, how to roast England. Yeah. And it's got to be friendly like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah. you watch, you watch like uh, Andrew Schultz work a room, like in one of his crowd work sets. Yeah. Where he's going after every group or Russell Peters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or, or Joe Coy. Yeah. You know, in China, it's like, you know, there's the Asians, Japanese people be like Koreans, yeah. you know, uh, mostly Korean and Japan because that's proximity, you know. Right. I don't really talk about uh, Vietnam or Thailand too much. But, um, yeah, I'm like, dude, uh, like my one buddy, one of our guys, Han, he, Bill Burr on his podcast was like, send us some jokes from China roasting America. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So Han like sent in one of his jokes and Bill Burr read it out. He was like, that's a great joke, you know? Yeah. So the joke was like he lived in Chinatown and he thought it was dumb that America calls it Chinatown. It's lazy. It's like, y'all got Korean town and Chinatown. He's like, if America went to Japan, they wouldn't call it America town. They just call it a military base. Uh, <laughs> but, I get it, but you know, it's, it's like you want you want Americans to be like, oh, this isn't just like some hacky shit. It's got to be like Comedy Central level, yeah. solid roast. And uh, well, we got a we got a guy, Elvin Liu, who's just writing amazing comedy, and a okay. lot of it is is taking the West down, but in a fun way. You know, okay. it's just like, yeah, you know, we're, we're coming up. You guys are coming down. Right, right. Um, so that that uh, that's kind of the thing I wanted to export. Yeah. Like we, we did a TV, a TV slot. Uh, they did a story on me and um, was basically about how I'm trying to get Chinese comics to represent real China. Yeah. Like all the stuff you don't know about. Right. You know, and like it's like giving the people a voice so that like when you think of China, what do you think of? Are you asking me specifically or are you just talking? Yeah, yeah. like in your okay. mind, like what do you what do you think of? Well, with, uh, with with only the with the fact that only uh, modern television is my teacher of China. It's just a place where there's a million people that look exactly the same. Um, if I were to talk, you know, if I were to talk like res disrespectfully, I'd say they eat all types of strange shit that's still alive. Um, <laughs> okay. you know what I mean, they eat the majority of people that I learn about <coughs> eat with sticks. You know what I mean? They they use chopsticks and they, you know, if I were to be stupid and silly about it, they eat while doing karate. You know what I mean? So it's uh, karate's Japanese, bro. I mean, kung fu, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, which one is Chinese? Kung fu? Chinese, Chinese kung fu, yeah. Yeah, Chinese kung fu. So um, <laughs> unfortunately, America's a 
very disrespectful place to other cultures everywhere I've been. Every time I got to get off of our little piece of the uh, rock and go to other countries, we were just kind of, I was just over uh, overwhelmed with how self-oriented we are. Like other countries, people might know three to five different languages. In America, man, we don't even try to mess with uh, Spanish. And we and we're damn near surrounded yeah. by Spanish people, you know what I mean? Because of Mexico. But we're just, yeah. you know, it's like that. Yeah, but uh, if you go to, like, if you come to Shanghai, like, it's been an international trading port for, like, 2,000 years. Right. It's as international as it gets. Yeah. Like, before before America existed, there were international people here. Mm. Uh, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Guangzhou, like South of China is the same. It's international. Right. Beijing's the capital, so there's all the embassies. It's international. You go anywhere else in China, you're people touching your hair and your skin. <laughs> yeah, I heard like, about that. Taking pictures and, and uh, <laughs> any foreigner. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they're sending their kids to take pictures. Right. And uh, all... 90% super friendly. Like, I get looks. You know what I mean? Like, my wife and I will be on the subway, and you can see, like, like, uh, there's, I'm sure there's one or two percent in every country that are those hyper nationalist racist types. Yeah. And it's, and it's not, it's not the majority. It feels like more, but it's, it's really a tiny amount. I'll say that about any country. I, I guarantee you in America, not that bad. It's like a tiny amount of dicks. They exist and it, it, it hurts, to, you know. But mostly you go to, out, of, out of Shanghai, people are very friendly. They're like, wow, it's a foreigner, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. Dude, legit, when I started in China, I was a DJ. Mm -hmm. We'd go to small small towns. And they would just be like, yo, this is Tiesto. They would just lie. Like, they would say, this guy's famous. Right. Like, I'd be on posters. The poster would be like, best DJ in in Europe. Right, 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 right. And no one knew. Yeah. yeah I was the shit. I was like, I was famous in every country. <laughs> Dude, I'm from South Africa. I do this in my act. It's a true story. When I got here, like, because I'm South African, I had an agent. It was like, Hey, there's this club they wanted an African DJ to play hip hop. Okay. Uh, you I mean show a black up, African like, DJ or a white they, African all, DJ? All they said was African. So okay. my AJ, <laughs> I show up and the agent's like, yeah, I need black skin, idiot. Right. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> and he's like losing his shit. He's like, oh, oh, man, I told everyone there's like a famous black guy coming. Yeah. And then he wouldn't let me, he wouldn't let me play hip hop. I was like, yo, oh. we can just play hip hop. And yeah. he's like, not with that face. And he's Damn. like, you play house music. Wow. And, then, and then he got up on the, on the mic and he announced to everyone that I'm from England and I'm playing house. <laughs> the whole thing was a hip hop party. They had hip hop dances. They yeah. had a whiskey promotion. But because I don't look black, I'm yeah, like, nah, you play right, house right, music, right. man. Awesome transition, it, man. Let's talk about that because I started off as a DJ in college. I oh, was, yeah, yeah I, I DJed. I was early in hip hop, didn't enjoy it as much because I'm older. I'm, I'm, uh, I graduated college in 94, 95. Ah, I graduated high school then, right? So, um, <clears throat> so house music where you are is what because chicago house music we believe we created it you know what i mean so and it branched out and then people turned it into other shit but um, i'll give you that what are you playing chicago house detroit techno i like jacking house like that chicago style um but shanghai is like shanghai is as international as it gets man there's like right after hour, the after hours clubs play techno, like it's, real, real, real techno. So it's considered um, techno. It's considered like what we would consider techno is the house music you're playing. No, 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 no. What what I play, I don't DJ anymore. Um, I mean, back but in But like uh, when I was playing, uh, when I moved here, 
I was playing uh, breaks and drum and bass, and then like breakbeat and drum and yeah. bass, and yeah, yeah. then that that club shut down, and the company that owned it had like a like an international party bar, like an open format. Yeah. Club hits, and I was like, I was really upset because I had to play that, but I used to do a party <laughs> before I left called like uh like retro funk and i'd play disco and funk okay and i was like big i was big into funk because the samples and house and hip-hop came from the same place yeah so if you did like a lot of funk music everyone knew it okay uh but then in shanghai i started out doing like mostly 80s and uh disco and uh yeah that was that was like 16 years ago so like the local radio station would come and get my playlist. And then like yeah. the next day I would hear like the music on the radio. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's interesting. That's but, really interesting. but techno is big. And then different cities have different flavors. Like yeah. Chengdu <clears throat> out in the West, um, they're big on hip hop, like the big hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, South. So what? What hip hop culture? Stuff. What what hip hop are they listening to? Be, uh, you know what I mean? Like oh, they write their own. Oh, they like, have their own. They I have mean, their like, own little Chink. singing. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. not in English, or is it in um in what they consider hip hop English? Dude, like, no, no, like so the the Chengdu scene, Chengdu, like west of China, like that's the big hip hop, the best hip hop guys. Yeah. Shanghai is international and very old school. Like Shanghai's got like a pretty strong jazz scene. Um but yeah, like okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not Let's really see. in the music scene, but like mostly people like EDM here. Like that's EDM, EDM trap. Like if you go to like a big club, yeah. And dude, the clubs here are all like Vegas clubs. Yeah, Vegas. Like right. huge. Like huge, like two thousand bottle service, yeah, tables everywhere, right? And those are big EDM, EDM style, but okay. they'll have like a hip hop club that's only hip hop, and it'll be everything from whatever's popular now to old school classics. But is is and, it obviously is Snoop Dogg? But is it somebody like um, Most Deaf? Do you know who that is? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I, I I don't I don't know who like the like the technical like lyricist type hip. I don't follow Chinese hip hop at all. Like oh okay, but I just I just know that like the bigger guys that my boy Elvin he's got like a a bit about Chinese rap versus U.S. rap. Yeah, and then the one the one guy's famous song is like "You're gonna learn Chinese." <laughs> Like that's the hook. He's yeah. like, that's like so, so Chinese. Like, and he he a million to all my boys to never learn a second language. <laughs> He's like, keep a one hundred. But but it, the mainstream regulations don't let subcultures like that come to the forefront. Oh, okay. so like all those all those scenes exist. They're underground. Yeah, but when you see. China presented on a world stage, you won't see real hip hop, but I promise you it exists. I mean, and you go to Beijing, it, the rock yeah. scene, like in, in Beijing, the rock metal scene is very big. Really? Shanghai's metal scene is very big. Um, wow. But you don't see it. Like, for instance, like if you got tattoos, you can't go on stage with tattoos that make you cover it up. Really? Like, uh, what's yeah. that? Yakuza. The Yakuza. Is that yeah, those Japanese that? gangsters? No, okay, they're Japanese. I'm, I'm, no, a, I'm, I'm but... trying not to be racist, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to enjoy this conversation without feeling like an asshole. So I apologize Point. for the, uh, it's the fine. Missing, missing. You don't have to <laughs> I'm just you don't have to apologize to me. But so why but are they, they have so a... worried about if 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 uh, something like the Yakuza is Japanese, which I respect, touche. What's their story with uh with uh, uh uh tattoos there? Just tattoos. It's my agent told me like 
I said my agent, not my Asian. <laughs> he 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 was explaining like if you imagine Christian conservative, yeah, right wing okay. values, yeah, that's kind of the level of where like you're allowed to be in public. Okay. So like, oh, I don't like tattoos. I don't like earrings, face piercings, that sort of stuff. Wow. Uh, so they they're very conservative here. Hmm. And uh, obviously, you can you can be that all day, but you just can't be on representative of that on TV. Okay, and y'all so, don't have, like they don't. I mean, I'm not gonna stick to the rate uh, to the uh, stereotypes, but the black web you can't get it out there, huh? Oh yeah, they have all that stuff, but the internet um, the internet regulators are like. They treat it like serious crime. Mm. So like, you know, like like the high tech, uh, what do you call it? Like the great firewall, like those guys. Yeah. They're not like. Like I follow the cops on WeChat, right? Like they, they have their own public thing. Yeah. And they always they're always like uh busting like scams, you know, like internet fraud, stuff like that, pornography, sex trafficking, uh, you know, like all that shit. So like there is dark internet stuff, but it gets shut down pretty fast. So wait, but, you just we have like just... Weibo, which is like uh Twitter. And that's wild. Like, and you can like, wait. You just said you follow the Cubs, right? The Cubs, the cops, the police, the oh, police. The police. Oh, okay. I thought you were yeah. talking about our baseball team, and I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 no. But like, yeah. So like, there's like a local police thing, like this one. Like they show you like the messages of how the scams, yeah, get set up. And then they all like talk about how they went in and raided the place and all the evidence they found. Right. It's pretty nuts. Like these yeah. these centers of people. Um, That's very common for American news, right? Do you know that? Yeah. What? To see stuff like that. We see that every day, all day. Yeah. So then also it's like, so it's a very high tech uh societies so there's a lot of face recognition stuff and then okay. because of that um you can't get people can it. steal your identity pretty easy because your face is <laughs> everywhere so a lot of people wear masks to just protect their face identity very so, interesting uh, man so we have this <laughs> you group, know what I mean? we have this group called anonymous and they've always wore masks right and they do a lot yeah. of hacking and do a lot of uh you know, stuff like that. Um, so they must have been ahead of the curve on knowing that face recognition and everything, uh, even voice recognition is going to be a thing in the future. It's, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, wow. what's funny is, uh, is uh, the tech <laughs> doesn't really work on, doesn't really work on black people. <laughs> Face res recognition doesn't work on black yeah. people. But doesn't really work on especially dark skinned black people. Okay. So uh so you got that going. I'd say what happened to me. We uh we had a show and uh they were look there was a huge show, like a really big show that got shut down. Yeah. Because cause we I I say we, not me. But they applied for a license for like 500 people and they ended up selling tickets for way more. Yeah. And they were, so when it gets that high up, they just like, there's a different level of city safety that gets notified. Yeah. It's like this building shouldn't have 2000 people in it. So as soon as you sell 2000 tickets, it's like, okay, the, the fire department's going to know about that. Right. And then they check if it's, if it's allowed. Anyway, the show got shut down, but the dude was in town and they had to pay him. So they moved the show to another venue and did it anyway. 
Anyway, they got into shit for that. And they were looking for us. Uh, they came to, to another show, like a local small one. And uh, I saw the two guys in the audience. Because, like, you know, like, you, you know these guys. They're like local cops, you know? Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, they're here. So I went first. I went on stage first. And so Dan, the black guy, is hosting the show. Yeah. It took a picture of him. And then I then Dan brings me up. It took a picture of me. I got two jokes into my set. They got the picture of me. And then they're like, they just bounced. And then I went to the venue and like, okay, why are you selling tickets? You don't have a license for the show. And then they were like, okay, you're getting in shit. But then they were like, we need one of the foreigners on the show to sign that he was on the show. So he pulled out his camera and he's like, who's this guy? And they, they're looking at the black guy, but, but his face doesn't show up on the picture. So they're like, oh, fuck that guy. Who's the white guy? And then I got busted and Dan got out because his face wasn't, 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 wasn't clear. <laughs> That's funny. But it's weird because like the face recognition software, like uh, when COVID started, I don't know if you remember, there was uh, there's like this massive internet outcry that the, they were being racist. Like, cause like people were getting locked down and locked out of their buildings. Yeah. And there was like this, this crew, like they were all friends because the South of China has got a lot of African people and uh, these black dudes couldn't get back in their apartment buildings because they just locked everything up. And uh, so they were get, trying to get the embassies to like come help them out, you know, because like all their passports and everything's in their apartments. So like they're stuck on the street. They can't get in their building or they don't have anywhere to go. And it's one of those nightmare situations. So these dudes are just like, like all right, we'll figure it out. But they're just rolling around the streets, right? Right. Now they've got like a cop, a policeman like tailing them. <clears throat> And it's like, why are they got a policeman telling them? But it's right. because the face recognition software doesn't work at night. <laughs> they got okay. to, they got to send a guy. <laughs> you know, like yeah, that's that's we, pretty frightening. You can track though. everyone else. You know, yeah. you can you can track everyone from anywhere. But you know what's funny, man? I tell you this: like, like you look at videos of. China, like the streets, and you see these cameras everywhere. Yeah. Like, have you ever seen that footage? I've, Half I've, that shit doesn't work. Oh, really? Good. They need to be knocking those things off. No. Uh, yeah, shooting them down. No, this is what this is what happens. This guy was telling me what happens. So I'm not gonna recommend that because that would be subversion. But <laughs> what really happens is. Like it's a huge contract. Like if you get to install the cameras for yeah. say like a city grid, you know, it's like in perpetuity and uh, it's like a good, it's a good gig. Yeah. These camera companies will come in and be like, yo, can we install a system and run it for you? You know, like a salesman will be like, I'll put up this block. Right. And then yes. we'll, we'll test it. We'll run it on the software. Yeah. And then either I get the gig or I don't. So they put those things up and then if they don't get the contract, they just bounce. Wow. The cameras stay up. Yeah. So they just, they just like tested cameras that, that, that are not doing anything. You can okay. see which ones actually work. Okay. But it, That's cool. but it feels weird. Cause it's like, yo, there's like 40 cameras on my way to work. Right. Like, why do you need 40? Like you don't. Yeah. One camera can do all of it, but they're just like trash, really. Just they put them up on poles and then they they stuck there. That's it's crazy, man. It's, it's so interesting to hear about all of these uh, things that you're dealing with out there in China. And uh, I mean, in but China. we're not we're not dealing with anything. It's like life is life. You know, it's like, well, no, it's not. I mean, it's become your normal. Right. It's not normal. No, what's what's weird 
for it's weird for you is you can't just say whatever you want. Right. It's not it's not but, my normal. It's your normal. But but you can't say whatever you want. You know what I mean? Like it's almost the same thing. Like when you get to a certain level, ask Joe Rogan, you get to a certain level of mainstream, you have to watch what you say. You can't just well, say talking, whatever you want. No, 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 no. no. Joe so Rogan. This is like Joe Rogan. You can Joe Rogan said some stuff, and then it followed him. And the no, people. My point. Yeah. My point I is like. I get what like, you're saying. Like here, it's yeah. like it's narrowed in. Yeah. But like day to day, you you just can't monetize free speech. If that makes sense, like you can I hang out and yeah, you can I'm talk not, to your friends. Yeah. So it's like in America, they're fighting for the right to say whatever you want and make millions of dollars doing it. So like yeah. you could be a grifter that just makes money off negativity. Yeah. That shit would never happen here. Like right. if my business model is Fox News. Yeah. And just putting fear in your mind. That's not you. You're gonna get taken off the air. Yeah, without a doubt. You know what I mean? Like, or or if if your news is opinion, you're not a news. You can't call yourself news here. Okay. You can't even say, "Oh, I'm news," and then tell the judge, "Well, actually, I'm not really." They're like, "No, if your thing says news, your shit has to be 100 provable or something we say, right? Or you can't say it." Whereas in America, it's like, yo, we can say whatever we want, call ourselves whatever we want. So it's like, I look at what happens there and I'm like, yeah, you know, to me, I kind of like this better. <laughs> really? I'm, I'm detecting that. I'm detecting you know that what I mean? in what you're saying because I wouldn't want... Oh, I hate that I can't do comedy like I want it. But if I'm going to pick a society that's upwardly mobile and like everyone's just the whole system set up for you to get rich. Okay. You know, like they want prosperity, but yeah, unfortunately I can't do comedy the way I want. I can't say what I want, but I'm also from South Africa <laughs> and I don't want to go back. Right. Right. You know, right. like, like it's, it's if I had to pick between yeah. here, I don't know where I would go in the States. I kind of like where I am right now, but, I would still probably pick America, despite what uh, what people outside of America say about America. I so, would have, probably, so, so have you been on our soil here at all? Have you ever nah, visited nah. America? You should visit. Not sure when I will. No, I wouldn't. I, but I don't know when. You know, like my wife got the the ten year visa just before COVID hit, and then. Uh, Cause her mom lives out in New York. Oh, wow. um, okay. And, uh, but they was separated years ago. So I haven't met her. Right. But yeah. <laughs> and then I, I, and I have to decide like if I'd go to LA or, or New York, like I know is more it, people in LA. Is it considered um, very expensive to leave Shanghai and come to America? It is now. Cause the flights are limited. Okay. Like, Right now, I can't get back in the country if I leave. Ah, uh, yeah, I heard about that. I heard about. Yeah, that. so because like my job is not essential enough. Yeah, and that's like it's pretty messed up because I'm actually married. So, like, <laughs> and then also the yeah the flights are like crazy expensive. But yeah. um, but I think to go do some comedy, like you know, at some point. Yeah, man, uh, I, I, I would love a to bunch see of people our like, soil and, and touch some mics yeah. in America, man, just to see so you can gauge the difference because listening to you, my soul is fed by the freedom that I have when I'm on that stage. Yeah. No matter what, because as a Black America, uh, as a Black American in America, there are parameters that I have even walking around. You'll see them around. And then when I'm on stage, I don't have many 
um, parameters. Nobody can control what I'm saying unless they're not going to let me on their stage. Once I touch the mic, I'm in control. But you've seemed to yeah, for sure. You've seemed to uh, embrace the levels of control that the country has on you, and I was, you know, I. I've been on television, so well, I know they won't let you do certain things, and they won't. And I've been involved with films. That's and, uh, that's all it's like, yeah. So, like, imagine going on late night. Yeah, and legal no. has to approve what you say. Right. That's yeah. all it is. But but that's your all day every day life, not just on comedy. No, but just no, 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 not all day every day. No, dude. Like, like honestly. From my you perspective, have to, it seems to be. You know, like, like for real, like in America, when Donald Trump was president, people said he's an authoritarian dictator. And journalists were calling him a piece of shit all day long. Yeah. And all of them still have their jobs and all of them are still alive. Right. The dude's not an authoritarian. You know what well, I mean? I mean, like he's not... But I understand what you're saying. The, he's not... Are he, they not free to say what they say? Yes, they are free to because say that. Because he was like, sure. So so that's my point. Like, y'all got it great. Yeah. That's international media. Like, uh, you could say what you want about your leadership. Right. In that respect, sure. Here, you can't do that. Right. But in your day, in your day-to-day -day life, I live my life. I talk about what I want. I got weird friends that talk shit yeah. about everything and everything. We just don't do it on media. That's okay. it. So like you're fighting for the right to say it on this podcast or say it on a public stage. But you can be sure when someone films you and puts your shit that shouldn't be on the internet on the internet out of context, now you're in shit. Well, on our you know side I mean? of like, the internet, on our side of the internet, there the only things that are illegal are like pedophilia, like you mentioned earlier today, or some. There's not even like a major uh, issue with violence on certain platforms, especially if you can own your sure. own platform. But we're but but, my, but when you're um, on stage, yeah. my point is, if someone like say you go to a comedy club and you do. Yeah. Like whatever offensive joke you want and nobody sees it and the room loves it. They laughing. It's like you're hamming it up. It's a joke. Uh, duh. It's a joke. Some <laughs> asshole films it yeah. and posts it online. Right. And the outrage starts on the internet. Okay. You know what I mean? And you're like, but yo, that's the wrong context. So what they do here, this is like, it's not that I embrace it. It's that the, I understand the mindset. I accept the mindset. Massive triggering videos and outrage that create storms are suppressed. Like the, they they don't let shit run out of control for ratings here. If it's bullshit, it gets shut down. In the mix, they'll shut down other stuff. Maybe that they don't like. Yeah. But I'll take that hit because you're not voting anyway. You know what I mean? It's not like and I don't know who you guys <laughs> vote for, but like sometimes it's pretty fucked up. So the point you make doesn't always get you the result you want. So like the way I live my life here is like, okay, if I do anything commercial, I'm not going to push any buttons because yeah. no one wants complaints. Right. The, the local guy that approves my show, he doesn't want complaints. And I'll give you a good example. You'll relate to this. The police here have traffic police and police. The cops don't fuck with you in your car. The guy that manages the police, he only cares about your traffic shit. He can't even arrest you. If you break a law, he calls a cop who comes and charges you. You know That's what I mean? Speeding. They don't, mean, they don't, mean if I was speeding, then there's a traffic cop that comes and, and deals with yeah. me on speeding. Okay. Yeah, mostly like I ride a, a motorbike if I don't have my helmet on. He'll okay. pull me over and be like, you don't have a bike. You don't have a helmet. And then there'll be one cop at the corner who deals with the 
the tiny like ten dollar fine or whatever you get. Okay. You know what I mean? So the police here, they don't look for trouble. If you break the law, I will be like, yo, do you know what you did? Is it egregious? Is it a mandatory charge? No. Okay, then don't fuck up. Get out of here. Yeah. At the end of the year, when that dude puts a report in about what, what happened in his district, mm-hmm. if he has no arrests, he gets promoted. Ah. Okay. Because that means there's, there's no shit going on in his neighborhood. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so if you if you look at like any poster here, like it's like a, a, a like a cartoon dude and it's like a friendly notice from the local government. Harmony, no shit. Don't call shit. Right. So everyone get on. I don't want complaints. I don't want there's a guy smoking in the bar. There's a number you can call. It's snitch culture, right? Yeah. You go fuck with a local, he calls the police. And everyone's gonna take his side. Mm. But 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 the the fear of cops. Okay, once you're in, it's terrifying because they don't really speak English. You don't know when they're gonna bring a guy to speak English. There's no law that says they have to let you out in three hours if they can't. You know what I mean? Like right. But <clears throat> I've been in there for twelve hours. Um, but they were nice. You know, like. But the 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 like strategy is no incidents, no issues, no no bullshit. So in your everyday life, when that's how you live, mm-hmm. you extend that over to your stand-up comedy stage. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, yo, don't offend anyone when you go up there. It's like, yeah, I get it. Right. They apply the same thinking to everything. Okay, and uh, so. It's hard because for you guys, it's it's like the individual is everything, and then here the culture is the collective is, is everything. harmony and everyone getting on well is everything. So, That's so wait, you guys are gonna be a socialist country in, in ten years. It sounds like it, man. Because as you bring up um, the <laughs> fact that you guys you guys have perfected of facial recognition and the uses behind stuff like that. Well, that stuff is hey, Stanford did that. That's MIT shit. <laughs> yeah, but they did. But it's not overtly um, used to control people now, um, as I as I believe it might be more than what I know, like the CIA and the FBI do have some really sophisticated facial recognition software that if you're on their list and they can they can narrow it down to a bunch of people, then they might catch you based on it. I get it. But you're saying that when you're on the internet, your children are facially recognized to be under 17 and their phone is shut off. That's a no, whole no, 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 different no. When level you go of on, control. No, no, no. When you go on an app, Everybody on the internet needs to be who they are. Like if you if you sign on to Twitter, you you like you authenticate with your phone number and your email now, right? So like in China, if you want to open an internet account, yeah, you have to authenticate that you're a real person. Yes, but then okay, but so you put America, in your ID and one your second, one second. so so. In all America, I was saying when I hold up because you, you said something that wasn't to, true authenticate that it's you you have to authenticate that you're not a bot or a person i mean you have to authenticate yeah, that, that you're a person it, but not a, not me i could be a yeah exactly name. so the point is if you want to talk shit anonymously yeah is that really freedom of speech why do you have to hide oh no no i'm saying that i can do it me personally i can talk shit as who I am, or I can be anonymous and talk shit. But where yeah. you are, yeah, I know. But then you can't but when you're anonymous, first off, if you're anonymous and you can't be validated, yeah, as a real person, your ad revenue and all the money, your metrics are a lie. Yeah. That means you can have six accounts. Mm-hmm. 
There's no way that in this country they're going to let you sell ad revenue when 40% of your users are duplicates. That's fraud in China. They wouldn't let you do that. So one person gets one account, or if you want to be a multi-channel person, you basically say, I'm a multi-channel person and here's why. Like I manage, you know what I mean? So it's not always about censorship. It's like, listen, you can't just be a, like I'm going to go vote for this guy so he can get a, win a, a prize online. So I'll open six accounts. That's not how, you know, like they don't just let that shit happen. So but what I was saying was children legally are not allowed to spend like too much time on addictive uh, software. So yeah. the law will say if your TikTok, like Facebook, has a never ending feed that just doesn't stop scrolling after like uh, three pages, it'll stop and say, hey, you're doing some addictive behavior right now like get up and go do something and then the app will work in 20 minutes. Yeah. But you can't just sit here mindlessly using the app. That's the regulation. So it uses your, when you log in, it uses your, if you're a minor, it like says, okay, you logged in, like your phone fingerprint, like authenticates you. If you're a kid, it won't let you do that. If you're an adult, no, it gives a shit. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They, but TikTok is a Chinese app. That's why they want to ban it. And America doesn't do any of that shit. And then the kids in America are like, are just mindlessly getting indoctrinated by weirdos. You know what I mean? Like anything can happen on TikTok. And you don't know your kids looking at it. True, true. I but, get it. So, but the, I, I get it. I understand, man. It's not, it's just a preference. You prefer to have someone help you uh, with decisions like that. And Americans like myself would prefer to control that ourselves. But well, I agree, our, but yeah. I don't think, I don't think you, you have any control. Like you think you have. Yeah. Right. But you, I mean, you, you have no control what Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. With my child. The only control I have is I can take it her I can take her phone and put take it away from her. Yeah, but even you, man, like I, I, I get these videos I don't want to see on Facebook and I just click see less. Like I didn't even know how to block it. Yeah. It just it knows it pisses me off and it keeps putting it in front of me. And it's like, all right. <laughs> but but in uh in China, it's like the the Weibo is nuts. Yeah. So like, if you if you put something online and it gets five hundred shares or five thousand views, a human will look at it. Somebody in the in the management of the tech company is yeah. basically instructed to look at it. What is that before it goes viral? Before it goes weird? So and they're trying to protect. There's a person yeah. whose job it is to slow down viral videos. Slow them down. Depending okay. on what it is. Monitor them. Yeah, if it's if it's bullshit. And then like if there's like uh for instance like my friend who's uh, like internet celebrity. She'll post like a uh, oh there's like a, a an abusive case or some shit like or oh, someone beat their wife and they might be a, a party member or an official, you know, people lose their shit. They're like, Hey man, this can't happen. They send a cop to go deal with the domestic violence issue, whatever. If that post is still circulating, there's yeah. a thing underneath it, like the COVID information. Yeah. It'll say this case has been investigated by local police. Here's the case number as a matter of public record. So okay. if there's like an outrage, yeah. like it'll, but Weibo is wild, dude, wild. It's millions and millions and millions of people saying the most fucked up stuff. Okay. And mostly it just, they let it go. But if you 
but if it's like egregiously against leadership, they'll take yeah. it down. Okay. But okay. but it's just as screwed up as Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool, man. Listen, we're in our second hour here. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> it's probably we might four have to do an actual comedy one. Yeah, it's like yeah. five a.m. Yeah. Um. So what I'd like to do, man, is kind of close this out with you. I appreciate all the time, but we're you you. I mean, we're exchanging information. I could go all day talking to you. We could do we four or do five it. hours. Let's do another we should, one. We should do, uh, like, we got this all out of the way and, like, maybe streamline it into a comedy one. Yeah, let's do um, it, man. Let's do it. Because it's like, it it, it's, it almost seems like, because I actually wanted to, we did this early. But what I would have done is laid out, like, the context first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we should be like, okay, this is how we do comedy and why it's like that. And this is what, how they run the society here. And All this right. is what the scene is because it's, it's hard to jump back in and be like, yo, uh, well, actually not all censorship is censorship. Like yeah, actually yeah. it's about ad revenue and, and the law about information leaving the country that changes it's not just, hey, they banned Google. Like, no, they didn't. Yeah. There's a Google office in Shanghai. There's a Facebook office. They're trying to figure it out. Okay. It's not just about, I mean, they take shit down all the time. Yeah. On, so I'll tell on, you what, let's, let's do this, man. Let's set another date for us to do another one of these. I'm cool with doing, being the got, one. Hmm? Have you got the audio from this? I, I'm fully, it, I'm, yeah, I'm fully re, uh, recording every ounce. Yeah, yeah. So, so what I'm saying it, is like, yeah. if you send me the audio, I yeah. don't need the video. I'll run it through this transcription software. Yeah. So we can like pull out the, the text. Okay. And I'll, and I'll highlight like, yo, let's talk about these things. Cause, um, we didn't even get into bringing you guys out here. No, not as much, but it's okay. Cause I want to do shit. We should probably do like this once a month or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> fucking who knows? Cause it's so interesting, especially coming from where I'm coming from. Nobody in, in Chicago seen even most of them guys are like local. They, they don't yeah. travel anywhere. So not realizing that there's a whole different world out there, man. We, like I said, I want to have another one as soon as possible with you, but I don't want you up at four o'clock. Fucking, ah, that's you know, all right. You gotta sleep, and I'll take the Dude, time. We, we'll we, sleep the hours, right? We're 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 not locked down right now, but because it's just starting to blow up, and yeah. I don't want to get locked down. I'm just chilling at home. I don't. I work from home. Because oh, I manage okay. musicians. Yeah. So I just, right now. Oh, that's like, dope, man. Y'all got, uh, how big are you? Because uh, I got a lot of cats that are musicians that would love to come out there, bro. Oh, no. So I work for, I was starting a comedy company that for two years we couldn't start. So my old job, <laughs> well, I mean, literally, the entertainment's dead. Yes, so, yeah. Uh, so my old job, we we have like uh, DJs. Yeah. That's a big nightclub restaurant company, food and beverage company. Okay. So uh, I'm just in charge of the bands and the DJs and the music for the. And we got like uh, LEDs. Yeah. I do the video editing and all that stuff. So like, uh, so I just, I I'm the go between between the management and the musicians. Yeah. Because I don't think. I don't think businessmen should deal with artists. So yeah, I'm just right now. I'm just dealing with the musicians right now. Yeah. So I do that from home. I do their contracts and then send the papers and we're doing it all digitally. So I'm not worried about staying up late, you know, like, okay. Cause I, I can sleep in all day and then, uh, yeah, we just riding out this COVID bullshit. Okay. Right, so yeah. yeah, also like we're not we're not um we're not uh operational. Like all entertainment shut down right now. So when this we we submitted our licensing for foreigners first time legit 
licensed shows. We we applied for twenty eight shows. Yeah. And uh, like two months worth of shows, twenty eight. So it's like four a week. Right. For seven weeks, yeah. So two Friday, one Friday, one Saturday, two Sunday, and uh, the very first time the like the 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 head of the bureau the culture sounds so weird calling it a bureau, but they just like dudes, you know, the guys at the office, like the DMV. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're like, oh man, we really want foreigners on shows. And uh, I went, I told them like my vision, they were like, this is exactly what we want. So we, sh- we should have been doing shows April 1st and that's not going to happen. But after May, uh, they'll know who all of us are. And then it's yeah. like, they'll know our plan is to bring foreigners out. Right. And when you guys come out, it has to be like the perfect, like it has to go so well that they're like, yeah. do more of that. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I get it. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm with it too, man. I'm a, uh, I'll put together how much time you need me to have an hour or, or you need me to have t- uh, 30 minutes. Which one do you want to see? 45. 45. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah, we'll talk about it, but like the way it works is like you have to give a script. Yeah. And and like like no, and they just look at it. If if the room's got 300 people in it, uh then they'll send someone to watch the show. Yeah. And if they're dicks, they'll be like, Hey, you didn't stick to the script. But you don't have to, as long as you don't you don't uh like when Neil Brennan came out. Um, we had culture bureau guys in the audience and they loved the show. Okay. Um, and he even opened with like a Hong Kong joke and he was just in Hong Kong when it was popping off. Right, right. <laughs> but the joke was good. He was like, Hong Kong's like a, like a Hong Kong and China, like a, a couple in a relationship and Hong Kong's like the dude and China's like, yo, I want to be serious. And Hong Kong's like, yo, just chill. Let's... Let's hang out for a bit. <laughs> we'll right. see how it goes. Right. It's a good, it's a good opener. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like um, the, the script goes in and then they approve it. You get a visa for three months. Um, even if you're here for two weeks, it's a 90 day visa. And then we just hit up every city. Probably only four will get applied for, and then the other ones, the smaller markets, you they don't care. pretty much get to get to do the smaller cities and do whatever the fuck you want. Right, right, right. right. And uh, and then and then in Shanghai, we definitely will have a couple of come see the real shit shows, <laughs> you know. It's and then you good. get to tour, and then also uh, you go up to Mongolia to the Mongolian Comedy Club. Yeah, um, Ulan Patar, and then Japan and Taiwan and Hong Kong, and then there's Malaysia. So, like, mm-hmm. if you come to China, you can, you know, get to Hong Kong, and then like all the regions that bring the comics out split the flight to Hong Kong. Okay, and then we all pay the domestics. You know. Yeah. That's one way to coordinate it. But so then nice. that's like a that's like a a one month tour, I guess. Yeah, yeah. sound like it was that. I go to uh I go to Canada at least uh twice a year and it always ends up being about 3 to 6 weeks. So That's so you can just leave home like that? Yeah, I don't have a wife or kids. I do have a fiance now, but Part of her wants to travel with me. Um, stuff like that, she wouldn't necessarily be able to go on. But yeah, yeah I don't have no real constraints, man. I'm uh, I don't have any children. I didn't have any children. Yeah, Theo Von brought his girlfriend out. That was cool. Okay. Like he he yeah he was like, you don't have to get me business class. You'll take economy plus, but mm-hmm. let me bring the girl. And then yeah, so they hung out. Neil Brennan traveled alone. Joe DeRosa traveled alone. Um, But that's who we bought out, like our group. Since 2018, we had uh, Neil Brennan, Joe DeRosa, and 
Theo. Theo Vaughn was our first guy. Yeah. And yeah. um yeah, well, he not, just you know, those are those are good, those dudes are pretty solid. Uh, you know, Mateen, how did he travel? Did he bring somebody with him or was he by himself? Yeah, he came with his girlfriend. Yeah. Um she's like a like an influencer. Um, I don't know if they're still together. Okay. Um, so she was like taking pictures and shit, and shit. Yeah. Like, so there's like those those guys come to China and like they just do the tourism stuff. Yeah. But I'm setting up a 20 city network right now. Okay. And uh, and then what we're gonna do is also see which cities have the best English. Because there's some like obviously Shanghai is known, but there's some like university towns. Yeah. Like in Qingdao is not even on my list, but they've mm-hmm. got 2,000 master's students that study linguistics. Mm-hmm. So like they have like 2,000 really good English speakers wow. that I didn't know about. Right. So you could probably hit that town in a weekend and if half of them are like, oh, I'm going to go watch the show. Like you'll probably be able to do four shows in a weekend there. Yeah, and the so university, the, my the university, wouldn't they kind of pay for that if you hit the right you know well people. we just have to find a, a room the university don't have entertainment like like the US colleges oh they would give a fuck they're like <laughs> you study and you go home like <laughs> ah, that's crazy but uh, if, if you're at a university in China you're got, you got money okay dude parents People are selling their houses and shit to put their kids in college. It's crazy. Wow. So like that Asian work ethic you see, you see, like in Shanghai, if you, there's like a system here. We'll say this and we can wrap it up. Like it's called a hukou system. So that might be the most systemically fucked up thing about living here, which is like where you're born, you're entitled to land it's like your birthright. Yeah. So you can't own land in China. If you buy a house in China, you own it for 70 years. Mm. And then the government gets it back. There's Damn. no generation. You don't get generational wealth. Mm. Because fuck your kids. Why do they deserve a house that they didn't work for? Wow. You know what okay. I mean? All right. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's one way of thinking of it. But it's like, yeah. why does this kid, just because he has a last name of, Musk, a great granddad was a billionaire, but now he's a rich billionaire for nothing. Right, right. You know, so in China, you don't have that system. It's just like 70 years. So it's three generations. Okay. And then the land goes back. But if you're born in Shanghai, you get first rights to land in Shanghai. They have to let you buy a house in Shanghai. Okay. If you don't have a hukou, like this document, you have to do all your government affairs in where you were born, where your mm-hmm. hukou is, your schooling, all that shit's free there. Mm. So if you want to come to Shanghai, you're like, you're an outsider, like a YD. Yeah. So what that means is, like, if you're born in Shanghai, it's such a rich city, you get Shanghai privilege, so to speak. Okay. Like, shit's easy to hear. Yeah. Like, I didn't give a shit, but having a Shanghainese wife means I get married in Shanghai. If my if I met my wife here, but she was from another province, we'd have yeah. to go there and get married. Ah, uh, okay. But, but in nah. Shanghai, if you get a master's degree, they give you a hukou here. So you Damn. become a Shanghai citizen. Oh, okay. So it's like an immigrant, it's like an immigration policy. Yeah. So there, there's cities in China that are like attracting the most qualified people and they're getting richer. And then the smaller, poor cities have this exodus. Awesome. So it's almost like, like immigration in, in America, like Mexicans, South Americans going North, but it's happening inside China itself. But the, the, the provinces and cities are like mad competitive now. Okay. So everyone's like, hey, I wanted the best shit for my people. And then it's almost like a free market economy. Like the they out competing each other to be like the best. Right. Pretty cool. Sounds it, man. That sounds really cool. So 
it's a weird dude like there's a city nanjing used to be three hours on a, on the bullet train it's an hour now wow so you you can you can go to nanjing three hours away in 50 minutes and that's where one of the places we do shows so oh, like the infrastructure is really cool you can hit everything up like real quick yeah well i look forward uh, to getting on that train man um because i hear a lot about that bullet train that they have and uh they're trying to copy it in america but i don't know you know we got a lot of dummies we don't have people trying to get you know jump in front of it and shit like that so. I don't know why they can't just put glass up. We yeah. just lost one last two months ago. An old lady got stuck in one, but oh. uh, it's weird that you can just shove a person in front of a train. Well, like, I mean, up. you know, it's, you go into jail if you've shoved them, but they can jump on, and you know, ain't no victim that's going to be alive. They can't go to jail dead. You know, put the body Dude, I got a bit. It doesn't work here. This is an example of what doesn't work in Shanghai. Yeah. Is I having an argument with my wife about shitty jobs, and I was like, "Yeah, man, in Japan, like they work so hard in Japan, like people jump in front of the trains all the time." Really? And uh, yeah, like they work eighteen-hour days. My buddy's got a joke. He's like, "If you live in a subway station <coughs> in America, you're homeless. Like if you sleep in a subway station in Asia, you work in finance." because <laughs> okay. you're always on your way to work yeah yeah so, so i was saying to her like oh yeah in japan these guys jump in front of the trains and she was like yo how much does it suck to be a train driver in japan because it happens so often that's your desk at work right like, people are just killing themselves right in front of like, you right at your desk do they stop and, 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 or do they just keep going through the body? You know what I mean? Are there guys that pick that up? Since no, that? no, no. Like they, they, they got to jump at the stop. Yeah. But I mean, you can't, you can't hit the brakes on a train. Right. No. In not, England, not. The, in England, if it happens to you twice, you get paid out. You're done. You just, if you're a train driver, they're yeah. like, all right, thanks for your service. Right, right. The trauma. <laughs> I just pay you a salary for the rest of your life and you're good. Right. That's crazy. Apparently, there's a movie about it where, where this guy, he meets a suicidal guy and he hooks it up. He's like, oh, I just jump in front of mine and I'm out of here. Really? And then the dude meet. Yeah, and then the guy meets a girl on the platform and he falls in love. And the guy's like, come on. We had a deal, but he is supposed to jump. Right, right. <laughs> is this in English? No, it was a movie. Yeah, I don't know. Someone told me it was like a British. Oh, it was like a story around it. All right. Well, that's cool. That's one way to get lucky. It's okay. it's like the cats in Hong Kong that were cops. Some of them in 1996 they joined the Hong Kong police force. Yeah. And when when Britain left, th those dudes retired. Some of them were 21 years old. They got paid out to retire, spend the rest of their lives. Okay, well, that's cool. That's, man. Good. So, that's a good job. Yeah, that's crazy. Want to be a comedian? <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. All right, man. Well, let's, uh, let's, what we'll do is we got to reschedule this, do another one, and it'll be focused on a few more things that we, uh, we can plan. Miles, it's obviously, it's been an incredible pleasure learning from you, my man. And, uh, one of the things that you got to get I talk to too much. <laughs> No, no, it's perfect. It's great. I love talking no, I to guys who, who want to share. Because what you've been doing was sharing the culture. How else would we get it if you, if cats like yourself didn't share from your perspective? You know what I mean? So, man, I appreciate that. You, but. you, sh you should talk to Dawn, uh, like Dawn Wong. Yeah. I can hook you up there. Like, but... Um, she, she can be controversial sometimes. I'm she says that. some, she says some some uh, government official stuff. I get her yeah. her platform, you know, like her like banned for forty eight hours. Right, right. You know, well, like, I tell you what, inbox me, inbox me with her uh, with her infos in um in, in Facebook so we can talk. You know what I mean? And then I'll man, yeah maybe I'd love to talk to her. She's in uh, she's in uh, quarantine right now. 
in the in the hotel. In the hotel. Yeah. So maybe maybe she'll um she got nothing to do for ten more days. So maybe she can do it soon. Yeah, that's what uh, she saying. also she's a director, so she also like edits late. She'll probably be awake now. Okay. Um, but yeah, you talk to her, she got a complete opposite attitude towards China than I do. <laughs> okay, she hates it. Like really? she's she's like she doesn't hate it, but like she's she understands the control that you seem to embrace. She doesn't like the the you know what I mean? Like all she does every day on not it's not all she does, but what she posts online is American comedy translate. She translates it and posts it. Okay. Like her profile picture is Joan Rivers. You know, like she like loves comedy. Yeah. Um and then she really hates the fact that she can't do it that way. Right. <laughs> right. Here. I get I'm it. like, who gives a shit? It's all good. So that, that's kind of our strategy is like get you guys to send her clips. Yeah. See which ones go viral. Like she translates them, put them on her channel. Yeah. And then if they go, if they, they pop, then we're like, okay, this guy's going to tour well here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, so my okay, idea for these guys was like, she presents. It'll be like Don Wong presents. Okay, and, and we'll put her name on the. <clears throat> Got to see how controversial she gets though, because if she says some weird shit on social media, we're like, All right, but, um, well, I'm with it either way, man. And uh, again, I thank you, bro. I'm gonna get us uh, moving towards me sending this thing to you once it. Uh, once it get, uh, goes, you want the audio? I'm gonna get you both of them, and uh, then I don't mind if you got if you got Dropbox. I've got Dropbox as well. So. Yeah, that's what I got. So let me yeah. uh, let me end it, and uh, what we'll all do right. is we'll we'll touch bases on Facebook. All right. All right, cool, buddy. It's good to talk to you. Great talking to you, my man. We're gonna do some more business very soon. It's gonna happen. Catch you yeah. later, man. <laughs>